Adventure Island, a wild and wonderful place situated on the southwestern extremity of Ireland. To the west, the island's beautifully rugged coastline stands bravely against the incessant battering of the Atlantic Ocean, while to the east, the harbour of Knightstown provides safe and pleasant sanctuary for boats. For centuries, the people here have lived off the sea and land, just as island communities throughout the west of Ireland have. Valencia, however, is an island with a difference. For most of its history, the island and its Gaelic-speaking community had remained isolated, hidden beyond the fastness of the wild Kerry Mountains. In 1866, however, the name of Valencia would reverberate around the globe as the island played host to an event which would radically change the world, the successful completion of the first transatlantic cable. The cliffs of Filhamerum. This is the exact spot beneath me, 200 feet beneath me, where the, the first successful cable from Newfoundland uh, came ashore in the mid 1860s. The successful connecting of the cable station, of the cable between Newfoundland and, and Valencia was equal to putting a man on the moon a hundred years later. It's very hard to believe that Valencia, an island on the, on, 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 on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean on the west coast of Ireland, was the centre of world communication, which it was. I don't think we, we realised it, how important it was until it was talked about afterwards. Um, that it, you know, it, it was one of the important spots in the world. The audacious concept of connecting two continents was the brainchild of an American entrepreneur, Cyrus Field. At the time, it could take weeks to send a message by ship from London to New York. Field was both bold and brave enough to believe that instant communication was possible. To put a cable across the ocean was a big deal in the 19th century. Uh, and it was cutting edge, as we say, in terms of the science and technology. And I'd say uh, things that were necessary before you could do that. First of all, you needed the telegraph, uh, which was practical only in the 1840s. Secondly, uh, you need the technology for making these cables, uh, in particular uh, winding wire around the cables to protect them. That was a technology that was available only in the 1840s. Uh, you needed ships that could carry this, and not sailing ships, but steamships, because you want to go in a straight line. You can't lay a cable if you're going uh, crooked across the Atlantic. So we're talking about doing something that hadn't been done before, uh, was impossible before, and these guys were stretching, well, they were stretching beyond the technology. When Cyrus Field looked at a map of the world, he saw that Newfoundland was the furthest point east in North America. As he traced his way across the Atlantic to the nearest point in Europe, his finger came to rest on a little-known island called Valencia. For more than a decade, Cyrus Field pursued his dream, securing investors, developing the technology and sourcing suitable vessels that could carry and lay over 2,000 miles of cable. Oh, it was an amazing enterprise. Uh, when it was first planned in the 1850s, the longest cable that had been laid was about 100 miles. Uh, and most of the cables were between England and Ireland, England and uh, mainland Europe. And here comes Cyrus Field in New York, and he proposes a cable across the Atlantic, 2,000 miles from Ireland to Newfoundland. But it took a bold visionary, I think, to, to see that uh, it could be done. And he took, I think, um, 30 voyages across the Atlantic by ship and he got seasick on every one of them, so it gives you an idea of his uh, persistence. After 12 years of dogged perseverance, five attempts, endless trials and tribulations, Field finally succeeded. In 
In 1866, the transatlantic cable was brought ashore here at Vile Homerum in Valencia, and a message was successfully sent to the other side of the Atlantic. The excitement it caused, there were hundreds of people here uh, all around us, and um, there were five or six ships involved, of course. I suppose there would be about 30 or 40 all told between uh, local boats and schooners bringing the end of the cable ashore and they brought it in on, on a raft and floated into to this cliff beneath me here. So you can imagine that went on for a week or 10 days before they made a final connection. But for the first time, you could send a message across the ocean instantaneously and have it delivered and get a reply within an hour. And it revolutionized communications. And there's a direct line from the 1850s when that started to the internet today when you can send an email and it's there in seconds. The event marked one of the world's greatest technological achievements. The world had suddenly become a smaller place and Valencia thrived. Even when I was a boy, there was only a while, there was only one, there was only one, there was only one shop now on the island. When I was a boy, there were, there were eight, eight or nine shops in our village here. And there was two butchers, and there was two bakeries, and there was a post office, which we haven't got now, and the police barracks, you know, and a school. You know, it was, it was fairly, it was thriving, really, like, you know. Valencia had many, many things which the mainland were deprived of. And uh, that's the mix of the local population with the, with the workers from various other places. It gave it a great uh, kind of intercultural dimension, which uh, enriched the whole place. The successful completion of the cable may have had a major impact on island life, but its global significance was mind-blowing, both politically and commercially. For the very first time, the world's major markets were connected. The dynamics of wealth, trade and commerce were dramatically altered by what was essentially the Victorian equivalent of the Internet. Its main impact was on economics and politics, of course. I mean, the average person did not send a telegram because of the cost in the early days. That changed later, of course. But um, the main investors in the cable were businessmen, particularly people like the Manchester Cotton Men, who, if they knew the price of cotton in America and could um, put an order in for a ship to be delivered, a shipload to be delivered to Manchester, they could make tremendous profits uh, by having that advanced knowledge of uh, at the price within a few seconds or an hour or more uh, instead of in three weeks or more. Within another six, seven years, all of the major countries of the world were, were joined by these cables uh, from Britain to India to Australia, China, and so forth. And now you had a world communication system. This was the beginning of what we might call uh, an international network, what we use today as uh, the internet, if you like. The cable industry would flourish for the next hundred years or so. But with the advent of new technology, the existing system of telegraphy was gradually rendered obsolete. And in 1966, the last cable station on Valencia finally closed. While the demise of the cable may have left a void on Valencia, the island's legacy and its role in one of the world's greatest undertakings is immense. By an accident of geography, an isolated Irish island had been catapulted onto the world stage. The impact on the island are oh, just tremendous from, from a business, boating, cultural, in many, many aspects, it had left a lasting impact. Oh, Valencia was in the forefront, definitely. The, the, um, the, the technology and the application of it. Was, was all between here and Hearts Content in Newfoundland.
this this little room here, that's where the machinery was kept, the important machinery making the connection to the cables. Yes, I, I suppose it's amazing in a way to think that uh, this room was probably the most important room in the, in, in the whole world, in the free world. <clears throat> because it, 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 it carried a lifeline, a daily lifeline of communication between the old world and the new. Mm -hmm.